Guys, I'm Vivek Khurana. I've come from Delhi, India, and uh, I had been associated uh, being with uh, open source in some or the other form. Uh, in past, I have co done some col uh, contributions like the Drupal module, and I have few React Native, two React Native packages in the uh, GitHub which are available. So uh, today I just wanted to, uh, why I have came here is that before, before we get into the actual technology part, you know, I would like you guys to actually understand the problem that we are trying to address. So let's do a small activity before we start. Okay. Raise both of your hands. Okay. And now close down your ears as hard as you can. And now try to understand what I'm speaking. Even a one minute, it was very difficult for you to interpret what I was speaking. Now imagine the life of a person who has been, who has, who's either born or has developed a, a hearing disability. How difficult it will be for them to, in, to have a normal conversation with the society. And the problem that uh, with whatever methodologies we have is that all the methods expect the person with disability to adapt according to the problem, to the society. Instead of society trying to find a way to be able to interact with them, yes, there has been, uh, an, uh, in past has been an attempt and one of the most successful has been the hand sign language. Now, although hand sign language is, is more or less a universal mechanism to communicate, but it has its own issues. Now, one of the ma major issues is that it is not easy to learn. You know, it's not possible for people like you and me to be able to learn it so easily. And uh, while, uh, and most of us are also not interested. Why, why should we got in, get into it? We want to learn foreign languages, but that's okay. And it is very difficult to find the interpreters also. So I was reading on the internet, it's not a verified number, but I read it somewhere on the internet that in year 2017, there were only 250 certified hand sign interpreters in India. Now imagine India, a country of 1.2 billion people had only one, 250 certified interpreters. So this is, if we look at it, it doesn't seem to it, but it's actually a very deep problem. I mean, if, if a highly populated country has this situation, imagine the countries uh, which are not so developed and uh, have lesser populations. It will, it is almost next to impossible. So how do we fix this? So how it all happened is that uh, uh, it, one fine day I was actually thinking, what can I do in ML and all? And uh, so my wife happens to be a special educator. She works with pay children with uh, special needs uh, to uh, educate them and all. So during one of the conversations, uh, a topic uh, came up with people with hearing disabilities and, uh, and it was like, it is very difficult to understand. So how do we do? And when I looked at it carefully, I realized that it's actually a good problem to solve using machine learning because although we have interpreters uh, today have real time interpreters, which can translate from Chinese to English, from Hindi to English, to English to any other language, but why not for this language? We have character recognizers, we have speech recognizers, we have gesture recognizers, everything is there, but there's no concrete solution which I could find. So I started looking around initial, it was initial days of uh, earlier 2018, I started to look around, mostly working it on it over the weekends whenever I could find time, but couldn't find any solution which was closer to it initially. Uh, then I thought, let's start using uh, uh, neural networks to solve the problem. Uh, so what uh, I started out is how people generally would start doing and pros trying to solve it. I tried to take it as an image classification problem. You know, uh, for, uh, for those who are not aware of the image classification problem is basically it helps you take a bunch of images and then either, you know, classify it in, in a certain category that, you know, this is an animal, this is a human, this is, so you can do that kind of an image classification problem, thinking that at least let's start with alphabets, I'll be able to classify the alphabets and then move on to join those classifications to come up with words and sentences and all uh, that we do and maybe add some grammar to it at a later stage. But yes, it worked initially for certain alphabets, but 
for certain alphabets it was not working out especially like alphabets like C. So C is represented like this. In, in hand sign language this is C. Now the problem with C is and I'll, I'll show you guys on, uh, if time is there on the, uh, on the demo also. It never, no, a finger could be a little straighter. You know, for example, if when I do this, the, the default pose is this, my pinky finger is not curled, it is straightened. Uh, and uh, there are other things that somebody might do see like this, somebody might do like this and, and, and at times because of camera angles, it might not appear curled also in, in camera. So those were the practical problems that I started to face and uh, you know, initially it didn't work. So I thought probably it's not a good problem and I stopped working on it. Uh, and uh, then about a, a month later, I was uh, going through something and uh, so, uh, and while I was doing this, I also came across that there are other issues in hand sign language that because based on certain regions, more words can be added. You know, it is more like Japanese. In Japanese, you can add more words to uh, the language. You can create your own words if you want. So, uh, so uh, based on certain regions, you might have specific words and at times there are words which are represented by a specific gesture, not just alphabets. So uh, looking at it, so imagine training uh, just if even if I take just 26 alphabets, uh, for those who have actually done machine learning, you don't get results with 100 or 200 images. You know, if you want to have a prediction and when you are actually trying to talk, you want to have a prediction of over 90 percent you know, prediction uh, and an interpretation which is very close to the human intelligence and that actually requires lots of images, you know, uh, a lot of couple of images that uh, which are required. So one of the attempts which was done by uh, one of the students uh, who happens to be my cousin also was that he took, uh, he took Blender and he started animating. You know, he defined Blender animations and he said, let me animate and generate more and more images out of it and then we try to train it. But that's, although we were able to get close to oh, the, the numbers, but it was still, the problem was, how will we add more alphabets to it? How will we add more words to it? That was increasingly a problem because training a neural network is not an easy task. It takes time. It takes a computational power to train a neural network and the size of neural networks is huge. Now imagine I train a, a neural network uh, based out of India on interpreting and somebody in Singapore wants to use it. What will happen? I will ha if there are, uh, I will have to train it for the according to the local dialect. Yes, I will have to and then the whole data has to be transmitted also back to that specific phone or the app has to be whatever is there has to be updated and uh, my actual target is that I want to come up with an Android app that can do this. Uh, so. I kept trying, uh, so one day as I said, I, when I was not getting good results, I stopped working on it for a while and then one day I came across a blog post on Medium which was trying to uh, estimate the hand poses and going through that uh, hand po uh, that blog post, I, ca I came across some other research work done by a couple of people, not couple of people but couple of universities where they actually used a combination of a neural network and a Cartesian geometry to be able to understand what exactly the pose is right now. So uh, if you can't understand, it's like, uh, how many of you are here aware of PoseNet? You across, came across PoseNet? So PoseNet is, is this neural network. So uh, I am sure some of you would have seen these uh, virtual cloth trial equipments where there is a mirror on front of you stand when you stand and you can just try whatever clothes you want and even though you move around the, the everything moves around with you. So that's that comes from a neural network which has been trained by a couple of universities uh, 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 research community and is known as PoseNet. So how do you work in neural network is basically you train these networks and why you suddenly see this burst of uh, AI and neural network is because there had been good framework and good data sets which have been released. So. So there are some of the famous uh, uh, networks where available uh, networks which is PoseNet and then there is uh, MobileNet, there is Coco. So and then uh, famous is Inception from Google which has a collection of huge libraries which can be used to for object detection. But if you look at closely it is not a, just an object detection problem. It is, it is uh, more or less to be able to identify the specific pose. 
So going through it, uh, I found some more uh, uh, links uh, which, which are there. So these were the two links. Uh, uh, this one is actually uh, 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 the first useful thing that I found. This was, uh, this was one link which, uh, which is a, a research by some German university. I think it's German, if, even if I'm wrong, sorry. Uh, which has, uh, they have published a paper and they actually used, what they did is they uh, used Cartesian geometry. So Cartesian geometry is geometry in three dimensions. Uh, generally the geometry that we study in school is only two dimensions, X and Y, but Cartesian geometry adds the third dimension. So now I have a, pro uh, I have a solution that I can identify the posture of the hand. I can identify the finger is going up or going down or going vertical or, it, or is it curved. So I am able to, so with this I am, a, if I look at, just, if I get a picture like this, I, uh, the, the network will be able to identify that, okay, this is a hand, these are for my five fingers and on top of it, using Cartesian geometry, you can figure out that, you know, this finger is curled, this finger is pointing up, this finger is pointing diagonally and that majorly solved one of the major, that's why I wrote moment of Euroca because that majorly solved the problem that I was trying to solve. So uh, this was actually the, uh, uh, guest post by a guy called Prasad Pai. Uh, he, uh, he, he had done some work based on work of these guys uh, and trying to, I, I'm sorry if you were expecting, I, I can show you the code also. The, the code is already checked in in the jet, uh, GitHub and all and I'll show you the sample also. No, it's lit, actually very difficult to show because these neural networks are, these are like big files, you know, 600, 400 MB files. So these are all trained networks which have been trained. Uh, so when I started looking at it, uh, I actually found that, that a lot of work has been done in this. And my approach was correct that whoever has been able to work on it has been able to work on it by trying to identify the pose which the hand is using instead of you know just using images to uh, uh, identify. Uh, if you go to this link, uh, you'll find a lot of things. Uh, so Eric papers uh, which has done a lot of work and uh, then uh, uh, this guy will point you to the data files which are which are used and on those data files you'll find lot more uh, connections i'll show if if i can i'll show you lot more data sets which have been trained which can be used put to other uh, usages so uh, this guy actually uh, so and this is a, this is like a master list of so there are a lot of uh, uh, networks which have been developed by various universities, NU and uh, others. A uh, lot of research has already gone into it and there are specific formats uh, all have been designed. So this was basically the research uh, which has, which I had, which had gone in. Now based on it, yes, I was able to identify, but I had to work. I had to get this to work. So yes, there was this solution which was able to identify poses, this solution which was able to identify poses but they were not labeled. No, so still the work was there that not only we have to identify poses and uh, label them. The second problem which came across was they were working on static images. But I have to get it done in real time. So then again the, the next bunch of problems came in that uh, we have to do it in real time and you know trying to interpret real time uh, moving objects changing uh, poses is, is not that much straightforward. Uh, if you try to do it, I mean, uh, anybody here has worked on OpenCV? So if you try to put OpenCV and try to do a, a network analysis uh, while in real time, just see the FPS rate, how it drops badly. So yes, we had to look into certain other solutions like trying to come up with threading and all uh, to be able to uh, uh, get this to work. But finally, uh, Luckily in January this year, uh, we managed to get uh, some breakthrough. So we were able to identify, uh, this is this is a shot. I just took sitting here, that's why I got late. Uh, I just thought it's better to take a shot sitting here. Uh, so this is B, D. So that's how we were, we are right now able to identify most, lot of alphabets. Yes, it is right now a work in progress uh, and uh, uh, what I uh, what I need now is is basically I need help from you guys because the reason of speaking out here is that you guys are from different countries. Uh, I want help from you guys to be able to if you can connect me to NGOs or institutions or any other project working in your country, 
uh, which wants to work for uh, people with hearing disabilities. I need more less than one hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, so actually, initially I got a message, my talk is 20 minutes, but I realize it's listed for 40 minutes. <laughs> I prepared for 20 minutes only. Uh, so, uh, so I want help from you guys to connect me to such organizations who are trying to work with them. And uh, uh, that way, uh, because I want a lot of local information on, on what kind of words are there, what, how the local dialects work. Yes, I'm also looking for volunteers to help me out. Uh, the the OpenCV based Python code is there, I'll share the link. Uh, but uh, there's an all, I'm also working on an Android app, uh, Android and iOS app. Uh, that's little bit stuck, I wanted to show a demo, but uh, you know, I'm having certain problem in converting the existing uh, TensorFlow models to the TensorFlow Lite models which are used on Android. Uh, so that is also a work in progress. So I'm looking for people who are willing to uh, contribute in terms of adding more words, in terms of improving the existing software, and in terms of uh, uh, taking, building a better uh, user interface. I also uh, working on a, a web interface from which, which I can give it to the NGOs who want to work with it and who can, where, from where people can add more uh, tools. Uh, so there is a small tool also which I have developed uh, which, which basically takes a video. Uh, so if you want to add a new gesture, the, that workflow has been worked out that you can take a, take shot, shoot a short video about, about 30 second long video if you can shoot with some noise, noise as in you'll have to move hand and all. Uh, uh, so based on that we can train an, a neural network to be mapped to a certain word on an alphabet. Uh, in terms of contribution, technical contribution, where I need most help is that there are certain gesture, there are certain uh, words or certain alphabets which are which are not signs per se, which are gestures. For example, Z or Z, as we say it in English, is like this. So what we need also is not just the not just the identification uh, of the word, there are, there is a complex problem still left before it, this solution becomes a usable solution is to be able to add uh, gesture control, uh, gesture based interpretation to it, uh, which, which should be a, not that much of a difficult problem for somebody who's uh, passionate to solve it. Yes, I have certain ideas. Uh, so that's more or less about it. What I wanted to introduce any, any questions, any suggestions you guys have. See, connect again, uh, connect is again, that is gesture recognition. That has to be built because see, when I started off, I didn't real, I, even I didn't know uh, sign language. And as I kept on developing, I realized that yes, there are other issues and there are certain uh, words. In terms of alphabets, it's only Z, which is like this, other, all other alphabets are static. But yes, there are words which are, which can be added in, in other languages and other dialects, which, uh, which can uh, basically track which which basically make it a little bit uh, d uh, difficult to track on static images and we need to have those kind of gesture controls. But uh, yes, using neural network, you can actually trace, you can track the moment. But the thing is that it has to be, the robustness is required because uh, when somebody is speaking, if you, if you have ever seen uh, 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 somebody talk, communicating in hand sign languages, they do very fast because it, for them it is like speaking how we are speaking. So they do it very fast. So that processing has to be uh, handled in, in, a, in a super fast way that, you know, or maybe we can tell them to slow down a little bit. That is still okay. So once we are able to crack more and more alphabets, then we can actually plug in into other translators and things like this, uh, a text to speech or speech to text kind of a model where, you know, the person is speaking and you simply point an app to it and they are able to talk back. So that's primarily what I'm planning to. Uh, that is why, but to be able to reach that level, as I said, we need to be able to build the whole database first. Right now, yes, whatever words or space, basic, basic things I could come up with uh, is, is, is okay, that we can. But uh, we need somebody who's, we need people who are experts at it and can add it. And yes, once it is done, then analyzing a video is, is not a difficult task at all. It's like, 
you know you just have to stream uh, pipe the stream from a video instead of uh, a camera and and the network will take care of it uh, so not the uh, not i would say I, I haven't done the the what you are suggesting but what i have tried upon is there are certain youtube videos that i could find out in which uh, the communication was happening in this language and try to interpret it and that is actually where try started to find out what are the issues in my solution one of the major issues right now is that it is slow uh, it can be speed up i am looking into it ways to be speed up because yes there are object detectors like yolo and all which are very fast now you know they can not only can identify the object they can identify the speed of uh, the at which a certain object is moving so that all we are looking at it right now what i have is a basic framework which is there the basic problem which i am trying to solve yes it can be improved and that's why i'm looking for uh, volunteers to help us out contributors not volunteers any other question okay thank you guys